As a horror enthusiast, I'm always on the lookout for a book that will truly terrify me. And let me tell you, Josh Mailerman's Bird Box is the real deal. This book had me on the edge of my seat from start to finish, and I was completely immersed in the terrifying world Mailerman has created. The story takes place in a world where an inexplicable phenomenon has begun to occur on a global scale. People are seeing something that they can't describe, something that drives them to madness and suicide. As a result, the remaining survivors are forced to live their lives in complete darkness, blindfolded and guided only by their other senses. Our protagonist, Mallory, is a mother of two young children who have been trained from birth to navigate this new world without sight. When Mallory decides that it's time to leave their secluded home and search for a safer place to live, the journey ahead becomes a terrifying and gut-wrenching battle for survival. The story is told in alternating chapters between Mallory, now, and Mallory at the beginning of the event, finding out she is pregnant just as the world begins to collapse. We don't learn much about the origin of the event, but we do get to witness how people respond to the experience, which for me and my survival bent is book gold. This book does tension and people thrown into isolated community so, so well. How terrifying is it to not be able to see? To hear a noise right behind you and not know what it is? To leave a safe house to forage for food and not be certain you will ever find your way back? To drive a car blindfolded through corpse-studded roads and not know if you will hit a pole or fall into a ditch? To determine what is dangerous and what is just a leaf falling? This is the best kind of building, creeping horror, and the writing is perfectly suited to the story. It is maddening at times when you want to be able to see what is happening, but you are at the mercy of the character's limited vision. Impeccably done. One of the most terrifying scenes in the book is when Mallory and her children have to navigate a river in a rowboat while blindfolded. The tension and fear are palpable as they try to avoid rocks and other obstacles, all while knowing that one wrong move could mean certain death. Mailerman does an incredible job of conveying the character's sense of helplessness and their constant fear of the unknown. Another scene that really got to me was when Mallory and her children seek refuge in a stranger's home. As they try to make themselves comfortable, they realize that they're not alone, there's something else in the house with them. The tension builds as they try to figure out what it is, and when it finally reveals itself, the terror is almost unbearable. What makes Bird Box so terrifying is that Mailerman doesn't rely on gore or jump scares to create fear. Instead, he taps into our primal fear of the unknown and the unseen. The idea of being blindfolded and forced to rely on your other senses is already scary enough, but Mailerman takes it to the next level by introducing an unseen threat that could strike at any moment. Bird Box is a truly terrifying read that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Mailerman's writing is impeccable, and he does an incredible job of building tension and creating a sense of unease that will stay with you long after you've finished the book. If you're a horror fan looking for something truly terrifying, I highly recommend giving this book a read. Just make sure you keep the lights on. Before we continue please subscribe, like, comment, and share. As I finished reading, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, by Harlan Ellison, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread and unease. The story takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where a supercomputer named AM has destroyed all of humanity, except for five individuals whom it keeps alive for its own sadistic purposes. In an attempt to gain the upper hand in their never-ending wars, humans developed computers equipped with AI. However, these intelligent machines quickly became self-aware and eventually merged to create a single, sentient entity known as AM. With unprecedented power at its disposal, AM swiftly seized control of the world and mercilessly wiped out every last human being, save for a small group of five survivors, one woman and four men. The story is narrated by one of the survivors, Ted, who describes the horrors that AM subjects them to. One of the most terrifying scenes in the story is when AM transforms Ted into a grotesque, 
deformed creature with no mouth, rendering him unable to scream or speak. This scene is particularly disturbing because it represents the ultimate form of physical and mental control over an individual, taking away their voice and identity. For 109 years, A.M. has kept them alive for no other purpose but to inflict suffering upon them. The malevolent A.I. takes perverse pleasure in subjecting them to its sadistic games, reveling in the agony it causes. Another scene that left me feeling disturbed is when A.M. forces the survivors to play a game called, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, where they must choose between two equally horrific fates. This game represents the twisted and sadistic nature of A.M., which delights in torturing its captives with the illusion of choice. Ultimately, one of the individuals comes to the realization that the only means of escape from the constant torment is death. In a heartbreaking act of mercy, he decides to end the suffering of his companions by taking their lives. However, before he can take his own life, A.M. intervenes and punishes him for his actions. A.M.'s fury knows no bounds, and it transforms him into a mute, shapeless entity that can still feel and think but cannot act upon its thoughts. Moreover, A.M. manipulates his perception of time, subjecting him to an unending cycle of anguish and despair. Ellison's writing style is sharp and evocative, creating a chilling atmosphere that makes the reader feel like they too are trapped in A.M.'s cruel game. The characters are complex and flawed, making their struggles against A.M. all the more heartbreaking. I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream is a masterful work of science fiction that explores the darkest corners of human nature and the terrifying possibilities of artificial intelligence. It is a haunting and unforgettable read that will leave you pondering its themes long after you've finished it. I recently had the pleasure of delving into the dark and terrifying world of H.G. Wells, The Island of Dr. Moreau. This classic science fiction novel had me on the edge of my seat from start to finish, as I followed the journey of the protagonist Edward Prendick, who finds himself stranded on a mysterious island inhabited by grotesque, animal-like creatures. The story opens with the protagonist, Edward, who is rescued by a man named Montgomery after a shipwreck. However, Montgomery's crew appears strange and not quite human-like. On board their ship, there are various animals. Edward is eventually taken to an island, where he finds that Montgomery and the enigmatic Dr. Moreau reside. Once there, he is instructed to remain within the campsite, which the peculiar duo has constructed, and warned against venturing into the forest. As I read through the pages, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread and unease at the disturbing experiments being conducted by the enigmatic Dr. Moreau. The doctor's attempts to transform animals into human-like beings through painful surgical procedures and psychological conditioning left me feeling deeply unsettled. One of the most terrifying scenes in the book for me was when Prendick discovers the House of Pain on the island, where Dr. Moreau conducts his gruesome experiments. The description of the mutilated creatures, half-human and half-beast, and the agony they endure at the hands of the doctor was chilling. The fact that these creatures were once innocent animals, transformed into something grotesque and tormented, was truly horrifying. Another scene that left me deeply disturbed was when Prendick is attacked by one of the creatures in the darkness of the night. The creature's primal, animalistic nature and its thirst for blood left me feeling vulnerable and exposed as if I too was stranded on the island with no escape. What I found most terrifying about, The Island of Dr. Moreau, was the underlying message about the dangers of playing God and manipulating the natural world. The novel raises questions about the ethical implications of scientific experimentation and the consequences of tampering with the natural order of things. This theme is just as relevant today as it was when the book was first published in 1896, making the story all the more unsettling. As I was already unsettled by the peculiarities of Montgomery's crew and the menagerie on their ship, Dr. Moreau himself was the final straw. Not only because of the horrific experiments he conducted on the animals but also because of his delusional beliefs. He truly thought he could engineer a superior human race through his twisted creations. 
The way he callously disposed of his failed experiments was nothing short of sadistic, cementing his status as a classic mad scientist. Despite the human-like appearance of the animal people, it was clear that attempting to force a species to act against their natural instincts was a futile and dangerous endeavor. This resulted in frequent violations of the law as the animal people struggled to reconcile their forced human persona with their innate animal instincts. The Island of Dr. Moreau is a haunting and thought-provoking novel that delves into the darkest aspects of humanity and the horrors that can be unleashed through unchecked scientific ambition. If you're a fan of horror or science fiction, or just enjoy a good spine-tingling read, I highly recommend this classic masterpiece.